G'day, welcome back to the channel. It's uh, time to do the 12 month review on the MUX, but it is plus four months because it's now November and yeah, things got in the road. So, being November though, don't forget to make those awkward phone calls to your mates and just let them know you're there for them because the last thing you need is them not to be around anymore. But we'll get into this and we'll go through all the ins and outs that we found along the way and what we like and what we don't. So at the front, factory bar, headlight protectors, bonnet protector. So we have got Iron Man Slimline LED bar, Iron Man spotties, and they are just amazing. I love them. Iron Man here have treated us great. So on the front end, the plastic trim that comes with the factory bull bar, it does not handle the sun here in Queensland it is not good but it's okay the bull bar's nice just the plastics could be better uh, right so we have changed all the suspension it is all Iron Man as well uh, changed upper control arms and the steering response is so much nicer with the upper control arm swap so they are the 110 constant load front and 250 constant load rears also changed the tyres and wheels, so Mickey Thompson Baja Boss, they're a 265, what are we, a 265 70 17. So the 17 doesn't clear the brake caliper by much, but it's enough. So that is the biggest legal tyre we can put on in Queensland. And these tyres are beautiful, I love them. And the wheels are amazing too, but yeah. So as we go down the car. Front panel's nice, this panel's nice, this panel we've got scratches. Um, that panel's nice. The door, the side steps, they do get scratched up quite badly. They are just plastic. Don't handle the things well. Uh, boot wise, there's nothing special on the boot. We've had the factory brake controller put on. I had this put on as an extra. I swapped over to the hammer lock fittings because they just look better. Um, then we come around this side. Hold tailgate area is nice. And we get to this door. We have this. Can you see our lovely crease in that sort of area? Someone opened their door and full on smashed it. So it goes from here all the way down and there's a little bit more just there. Just great. So that's one, two, three panels. This one's good, that one's good too. So factory snorkel, um, as I just touched it. Yep, that's loose. We'll tighten that up. Good job. All right, so things I did wrong in the first one is remote start. You have to press the lock button. Press and hold the start button. So the rattle you hear at the start is a hydraulic timing chain. Once it builds oil pressure, the rattle goes away. Things they could do better is find a way to hold that pressure so it doesn't have to build up every time it's there from the beginning. So it's quite nice. It'll run for 10 minutes, it'll turn off. You can do it again for another 10 minutes and then after that you need to actually get in the car. It'll only let you do it twice. And then the boot button. Press and hold the boot. Boot opens nicely. So, uh, I'll come back. This will be the last thing I go through. Is a power management system in the back. We'll jump in the front and just go through a couple of things up there again. So in the front, it's pretty standard. So, I'm just gonna put it in accessory mode. Oh, the door's open. Let me shut that. Now, it beeps at everything. That's the only downside. We went from a 2004 Pajero to a 2021 plus model MUX and technology is terrible. It's not our friend. So, first got it, one of the first things I thought, why do we need that in Queensland? We've got heated seats. We need air conditioned seats. Now, I hurt my back three months ago, which is hence why we're late on the review. 
and I lived with that turned on every day. So I have put in a wireless battery charger, a wireless phone charger, sorry, down here. It works okay. It's not the best, but it's just one I picked up from one of the car shops in town. Stereo-wise, it's quite good. There are a few little settings you need to adjust to make it better. Um, if you get on any of the MUX pages and search stereo settings, there's a couple of people that do quite a good tutorial on updating them. Um, in here. Turn it on. See, so, the yellow light's on that side. It just means tire pressures uh, aren't right, and the fact that I've got the tailgate set to open whenever I'm hooked up to a trailer. So the new models that get released, they automatically have a, when you plug the trailer in, it turns off all the lane assist towing stuff that you're not meant to drive with when you're towing. The older models, we have to press and hold this for three seconds. So we're currently at, oh, I'll shut this so you can see. Um, I think we've got 24,000 Ks on it and it's, yeah, we haven't had any real issues mechanically. Okay, what's that? Sorry, yep, 24,000. Oh yeah, that's, that's where it's at. Settings wise, this, this button here is amazing, love it. Turns off all the lane keeping stuff. And then when we get in the car, we go start. Then we come across and we turn this off. And then we turn the handbrake off. And then we put it in gear, put a seatbelt on, the rest. Now, this lovely button is your park assist. I feel that should be something that's always off and you choose to turn it on when you need help parking somewhere so you know you're not gonna crash. But it beeps at white lines on the road. It beeps at everything. It's quite annoying. And the opposite would be better choose to turn on not have it on and as for the end cap stuff now i did just turn off the uh, lane assist hence why we've got the elk and the and the little car going sideways there and the parking one is this other one here that's on so that's another thing that should be around town it shouldn't be something that you have to turn off because if there's a cyclist, a kid runs out on the road or anything, your car's seeing those white lines, you try and steer around that kid, it pulls you towards them. And there's been several times that I've heard of other people doing it, and I know it's done it to me once. A kid's run out from around a car, and I've swerved to go around it, and just pulling me back in towards a kid. And I freaked out. It was not a fun experience. That's an ANCAP safety rating thing. So Isuzu can't change it. It's something that ANCAP has to change that in town... It should be off and you turn it on when you're on the highway maybe it turns on at like 80 k's an hour or something and turns off again at 60. it's something that can be built into the system there's ways a lot of people have issues with this um sun mirror and the clearance on here so the actual mirror can slide sideways you can adjust that quite easy on the roof you've got your little sunglass storage i think we've only used it three times in the year and a bit that we've owned it newer models do not have this old CD box, which is amazing. So I carry my camp box tie deflators for when I am um, on the beach. They are beautiful things to use, they're so simple. Uh, we have the PhD floor mats, and these molded, and they just sit in beautifully around all the edges and everything so the carpets in here wear very easily it's just like this trim you can see all the scratches on everywhere so we've we've actually scrubbed this quite a lot and that's got my fingerprints all over it but yeah it's it's this glass finish piano finish whatever they call it doesn't fare well so as an android user this is plumbed in runs up under there runs up the side of the door up here into my phone holder and I'll just tuck that in here so it doesn't flap around. Turn it on, plug it in, instantly all my Android functions work all the time. Now the wife's iPhone and it was good until I plugged in my OBD2 connection. 
and then as soon as I plugged that in it messed with her Bluetooth and it would not connect to her phone so I can either have all my settings what be able to watch them on my phone through the OBD2 or my wife can have her phone connected that's what's down there smart move all right so moving back well glove box is small compared to the available room um, I'll come back to the CB as well. Oh, I'll do it from the other side. So I've got the PHD Tech printed floor mats front and rear rows, front and middle row, and then I've just got the factory factory rubber mat back there. So this printed um, plastic mat, rubberized plastic mat, molded over the wheel the uh, yep arch all the way across it's brilliant the kids don't make too much mess in there with it so interior wise this is three kids living in the back of here we spent all of december january on holidays and last year and traveling and like there's marks and scuffs the carpet down here is all chewed up um there was food spilled all over the place and we've cleaned it as best we can and it's it's not terrible we did do interior protection when we got it so we expected it to clean better than it has all right, so in here we go so um club box i remember how i get this off That's pretty much how you get it off just pull on it so in here i can't really get you down long enough because it's still connected in here, that's where the glove box stops. There is nearly six inches from the bottom of the glove box to the floor that is unused space. So what I've done is my CB's mounted here. I've got from the main, oh, sorry, my CB's mounted here. And in here, this is all my wiring for my headrest DVD players for the kids. So I've got, from the main battery at the moment comes through, I've got an extra dual usb port up the front which runs my wireless charger and another phone charger lead for the wife or myself which everyone's not using it comes through runs the cb and runs the dual head units now i do need to run that back back to the um dual battery that's in the back so that way if we park up somewhere for a while the kids can watch their dvds and not run the battery flat pick these up off marketplace there's nothing else i can say they're just Head units. There is a cover that can go over these to hide them. I'm currently using them for storage for other stuff. Um, so if you need to access any of this stuff in here, I'll put that together soon. Um, ba basically what you do is you pull off that panel there and it does the same. You basically just got to manhandle it off or woman, person, handle it off. And then under a few screws, you can access under the side, and you can get through there, reach right through to here, you can put a cord, push something through, and you can pull something through from front to back. You do not have to pull the whole console out to do it. Um, what I do want to pull the console out is to do a wrap on all that mirror, piano finish stuff, that silver trim. Silver trim on the steering wheel. You drive in the sun, and that is in your eyes. Just, it gets right in there. Okay, rear seat wise. Um, so part of our um, battery fridge slide system. I do have a little portable DVD player I clip onto here. Um, but it gets in the road. This whole thing, I've got to un I have to redesign it somehow. Because it gets in the road of the seat when you fold it up and then You've got to flip it open and, yeah. Um, plastics. As you can see, they are soft and brittle. So even if you put anything in the back of this car, if it touches the plastic, it will scuff it. So we have dual USB 12 volt accessory socket all plumbed into my battery that's in under the fridge at the front. Uh, so that way we can run this DVD player. Open the boot. So here we have my current voltage. That was meant to be a thermometer, but the thermometer's just stopped 
telling what temperature it is. So this is error now. So when I first made this, it is made to, oh, you can't see it anything. Like there's, there's no room in here. That's what I'm saying. It's hard up against the plastics. And uh, formed it all around the edges of this so it doesn't hit. Gives it room for the air con rear air con to breathe. And I put these locking fridge, fridge slide lockable runners on. They were great for the first month and then they just don't lock anymore. So this is now my lock. I have a bolt because it just slides open. So these are all the tie downs for the fridge. There's a stop there so it can't push forwards. So it's just own sensor. Just, just doing the right thing because I know that if I was to be in an accident, I want everything I can to stop things going that way. Because I've got some cargo there that I really need to look after. So this is a 170 amp slimline lithium battery. And it's from, I think I got it from Aussie Batteries or something. And it just, it's there forever. You can lay them on the side upside down. They are not, they don't matter which way you put them. Bolted down. It cannot move. So down here is just my storage. So I've just got a little toolkit. The cover gear. And these are the little headrest covers off the those front DVD players. And in there I've got that um, other DVD players. And they're all the tie downs for the, for the fridge. Uh, that's the, back, the charger lead for the, well, power lead for the fridge. Um, just shovel, shackle, rope. You can, you can see. This shift is things. And then down this side, I've just got uh, a couple umbrellas and some tie downs. That'll show me. So I've tried to use all the space we've got for everything. Like, granted, you can't always do that, but I've tried the best I can. So it does lock out. I'll give it that. It, it doesn't, doesn't lock it in, but it does lock it out. And it slides away nicely. Just put the pin back in. Done. I also nearly forgot to mention, so any, any new car you buy has a smart alternator. It's part of the Euro emission stuff. And if you do a dual battery system, you will need a DC-DC charger. So that's what we've got there, just the Red Arc 1225. So it can run solar. So once we get the roof racks and everything else down the track, we'll chuck some solar on it. And that'll hopefully be able to run it down through there into the side somehow. Hopefully I can still access through everything when it's done. All right, so I think the only other thing I've got left is this little void. My precious cargo space, kids. So in here, down the side, just doggy bags, lead, water bottle. Um, once I get my roof racks on, so I'm going to get a set of Yakima racks and they're going to go on here. I'll be doing that one soon. Um, they will, I'll probably move my tie downs from here or make a, like a bag or something to go in there so it's a bit more user friendly. Even might even move most of my recovery gear up there and put other stuff down there because the easier it is to get recovery gear out, the better. So. Things I'd like to change outside the car, I would like to put on a aftermarket bull bar. So if anyone's keen for a factory bar in Queensland, central Queensland at that, I have one. It's it's here. I think they're like 4,800 brand new. Let's go three. Three is good. And um, yeah, it's there. There's no damage. There's bugs. I think there's a little scuff mark on it here, but it's been on it ever since I got it. But it's there. I'd do, I think I'm gonna do a um, warranty claim and get them replaced. So they'll be brand new too, if you're interested. Oh, if you're also interested, got a Troopy 75 series, 350 V8 Chef conversion, blue plated, Queensland. That's for sale. Probably even sell the STI if someone's keen. But hey, now we're getting off topic. All right, so, why we change the suspension? We changed the suspension because when we hooked up this van, 
Now this van's 2600 a, a total mass. What is this one is? Um, aggregate trailer mass, yeah. 2670. So it's well under the rated capacity of this car. And even at that weight, I think we had 220 ball weight. We lost 60 mil of travel on the rear here. The tire was nearly in the guard at factory height. And it was not nice to drive at all. Even with the weight distribution hitch on, it was still down 40 mil and the front come down another 30. And it, it, the electronic steering and it wasn't good. So we upgraded to the heavier suspension. Just for our own piece of mind, it is so much nicer to drive with this suspension than the factory. It was so soft. Um, and the wheels and tires are just a preference. We, we like to go full driving. We like to get out in the, on the sand, drive the beaches. It's, it's good. We didn't buy a full drive to just look pretty. But it does look pretty, I must admit. So, new ones, I'm pretty sure they've got like a side impact. Oh, look, there's a dent. I see a dent. Um, new ones have got side impact airbags for the front, uh, for the front footwell. The glove box is different. Um, the software changes in the trailer assist and a few other bits. I don't think there's anything else really difference between the 23 plus and what you're looking at. Just a couple of cosmetic things and a software update. Oh, and they offer a nice new blue. So if we're doing it again, if something was to happen to this, would I buy another one? Absolutely. I would buy another one of these tomorrow if I could. But I'd probably buy red. Because the red and black and the black. And, you know? Change these to black. Red and black. It'd just look good. These guys done this justice. Alright, okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, next video may be the roof racks um, or the troopy or something. But there'll be another video soon. If you feel like it, jump on, subscribe, like, share. Thanks for watching. See you next time.